call the February uh, Personnel Committee of the Rochester School Board to order. Uh, I'll move that we forego item one on the agenda, the Pledge of Allegiance, where we did it in a special meeting. Any issues with that? Okay. Item two is the approval of the December 7th, 2023 Personnel Committee minutes. Second. Or I'll make a motion. So moved. Sorry. Moved Second. And seconded. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Item three, we have retirements. Susan Abiati, music teacher. Marilyn Shepherdson, science teacher. Julia Hart, speech, speech pathologist. Mary Jo Snyder, special ed teacher. So moved with regret. Moved with regret. We second. have a second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Um, are these end of the school year? Like, I know we're already hurting our music teachers, so do we just lose another one? Or is this part of one we lost? No, this is retirement at the end of the year. Oh, okay. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Kyle, are these positions posted upon us accepting their retirements as far as trying they, to fill them? They, that's something where I was going to ask in other, um, okay. we, we normally ask the board um, this time of year to allow us to post positions that are in the operating. So again, Ms. Abiati's position Correct. Um, is not on the chopping block, so we would ask to post that okay. before the operating budget is approved. To my point, exactly. Yeah. We're, we're, having, we're struggling with music teachers. Let's get an early jump before accepting their retirements. We know it's a, you know, um, it's not... A, not common, but not unheard of to somebody pulls their retirement, um, but highly unlikely. So, all right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion and seconded. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Item four: resignation. Lisa Demars, para educator. Smith. Uh, excuse me, Carolyn Smith, a special ed teacher. And Karen Ware, paraeducator. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Item five public comment. Nope. No? Nope? <laughs> I'll forego reading the statement then. We have no public for public comment. Item six, other. Oh. Kyle, I know it's been brought up um, about doing exit interviews. It's been said that some people are not getting the phone calls. Are we making sure that we're following through with exit interviews? They're, they're getting letters, yes. I, I've been spot checking letters from Ms. Uh, Morris. Okay. I would think if people aren't getting them, there would be a different process. I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and post the positions for the retirements, even though our budget hasn't been approved yet. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to post the openings listed as the retirements under retirements. So we have a music teacher, science teacher, speech pathologist, and special ed teacher. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. You have another? No, I just uh, had I want to go off of with the exit interviews. The only question I had is most places I've worked at, when you have an exit interview, you have, you have that before you leave. This is the only place, I, the district's only place I've heard of where you have it after you've already left. I worked at a factory, and you met with the HR rep prior to you, like your last week. So that's just, I know there's something that policy can discuss and how we want to go about that, but I, I just find it just a little odd that we do it after. I don't know if you want to give input on why we do it that way. I think it's just been the way it's been done here for probably 25 years. Okay. So if you want to amend things, we can amend things. Okay. Do we need a motion to amend? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no. Oh. So, 
we have any other? Uh, mine's more budget based, so if you wanted to talk something else. Well, I, I, I guess, I mean, we need to start looking at the personnel side of the budget. But, um, that was going to be the other first other that I recommend the board to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know if everyone wants to open. I know you just got these tonight. But historically, normally what we do is at these meetings is, you know, the green pages are obviously all of the line items. And, and so historically, we look at large increases. And, you know, Ms. Kelly and I have sat down and talked about some of these also. Hopefully we can answer some of the reasons. I mean, one of them, if you look, life insurance, right? You see triple digit increases. But then you look at the dollar amount and it's smaller dollars, but it's just because of the percentage related to the cost uh, from previous year, okay? Um, so why don't we take, I don't know, Mr. Greer, you want to maybe take five minutes to review? I, I would like to, yes. Yeah. yeah. Just start flipping through. I mean, we've got, you're, you're absolutely right. A, you know, we're down 100% on a couple. Basically, we're not going to have miscellaneous salaries. So, you know, just obviously the big numbers jump out. And like Kyle just iterated, the, the percentage may be high, but the, the number may be low. So, dollar number. Was there any additional uh, like new positions added in this budget? So there, there is one position. Um, if you look at the uh, first page, uh, line item 1210, special education. If you recall, uh, personnel, I think it was in October or November, um, we, we discussed the, the possibility uh, of renaming Sarah's position uh, to assistant superintendent uh, of special education down the road. Um, it would be a change in title only, um, not a salary increase. Um, but then during ESSER grant dollars, we were able to get two positions that served directly underneath. Um, one of them was a current position we had. One was grant funded. So the position that you see there that results in a 50.26% uh, increase in salaries is that second assistant director position. Um, that personnel discussed. <coughs> um, in the event that we do have to make some hard decisions, do you have an anticipated list of positions that we may not have to go? Uh, there's a lot of scenarios we can go through um, to, you know, you obviously want to make sure your staff knows you don't want to, to remove Correct. staff. Um, so. You know, at, at times you can look at potential retirement positions, right? As, well, as, have as an option, because those positions are not affecting someone's livelihood going in the future. That's that's a possibility. Um, so obviously, you can look at certain things that aren't contractually obligated and look to make deductions. So, Kyle, can you just what are what do we have currently for vacancies? We haven't seen the number in a, in a little while as far as. Vacant position. It's about hundred, I believe. About hundred. Mm -hmm. So those those vacancies. Right in there. 
are, are they're in here, yes. but as long as they're vacant, that money is can be used to offset other things or, or whatnot. I mean, not that we intend to, but Mrs. Herring. Uh, would we be able to fund that position one more year as a grant funded position? No. We couldn't reapply. No, it's yeah, the grant's done. It's done. Yeah, it's done. I, I just have a couple of questions. Under um, technology services, the seventy-two thousand one hundred and thirty-two for technical salaries, it's, uh, but there's no new position. showing this year where there's like a, in other words, the amount for that position salary had been entered somewhere else, not within the technical services. Do you know where? So we can see where the decline would be? Um, I can look that up. I would need to get into the system, but I can let you know that tomorrow. And then on the last page, operations of plan, it's kind of the same thing. It's like an increase of 395000 for O&M. I know the subs went down, but that's the subs went down only by eighty-five thousand. But we still have a. Uh, the subs stayed steady <coughs> at eighty-five thousand. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Dave, Toddy, and I were just talking about that just before the meeting, um, and I'm going to look into it with him tomorrow. Okay. But do we know why it's at high now? So we don't know why it's at high. We don't. Okay. I mean that's okay. We're going to follow up in the emails and board this. Yes, yeah, thank you. So, just as a recap, Kyle, if I may, um, any new positions included with this budget proposal? I'll start. It was just that one. Just the one, right? Because it's it was grant funded, it's no longer grant funded. Right, so we're transferring. So, it, it's not adding a position, it's basically transferring or renaming. Well, it's, it's, it's technically adding a position because we didn't fund it in O&M before. It was funded through a grant. Okay. So the position existed. We just didn't pay for, for local dollars, from right. local dollars. So we're recommending that we add it, okay. and then it would have to become part of the operational budget. Okay. Thank you for the clarity. But other than that, the 11 positions we did last year, and everything is still rolling in. Mr. Bell also has Oh. Mr. Bellows? <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. I want to you is that operations and maintenance. Yeah. All right, thank you. So just good good point. O and M operations, maintenance, and then CIP is capital improvements. And typically we don't have a whole lot of capital improvements in the personnel side of things. So. Very preliminary, but um, obviously it's pretty clear the increases with the insurance is the, the killer ties our hands in a lot of areas. So, oh. um, so we have 100 positions open. So what is that ballpark cost that it has not been built? Well, it's, it's, it depends on the position. So uh, yeah, we just a, don't have a number. An, a, an average, like the average cost for a teacher position is about $88,000. Um, <clears> but, but that number is representative of Paris, uh, yeah. food service, uh, secretary. But I can get back to you as well. Yeah, just the whatever it would be opened up. Mrs. Stokes? How much money are we planning on? I know, like, we normally give money back at the end of the year to the city. I mean, so I guess my question is we have all these open positions, but we're 1.1 million over the budget. Like, are we really going to be able to fill those positions? If not, what's what is that amount? Like Mr. Cusimano had asked, and I mean, if we don't hire them in September, that is going to save us some kind of money. So I, I think that's something that could be considered. 
Well, those positions, though they're vacant, are in the budget, yes. right? So we're we're projected in basically the, the it's the tax cap that ties our hands as far as the increase, right? Right, but I'm saying we have a hundred open positions that we weren't able to fill. So I would hate to cut something that we might need if we can't fill those positions and then give money back to the I, city. And right. I, I I no I I agree. I, yeah. I'm not. We're not at cutting positions yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Mr. Bullard. Yeah, I think that we're talking about surplus funds, which right. is a combination of vacant positions and other lines. Correct. Versus if we have to make decisions, maybe some of those vacant positions that never get filled or something, but that would be a right. district recommendation to us. Right. So at this point, I mean, obviously we're digging in more to see what we get for updates and further discussion next month. And, and it's important to note that any surplus funds from FY24 can't be used in 25, so mm -hmm. they go back to the city. But you could ask and appeal to the city council, right, in June when they're approving our budget, if we know we're giving X back, that that's a reason why you would want X in, in favor of 25. So that's and a possibility. It's just not something you can bank on. And still with six months, five-plus months left in the budget, where we have no idea yet of what the surplus is even looking at. So, so any other discussion? So going up, so the money you're talking about that we give back to the city, mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about? Yeah. My question is that if we have that money at the end of the year that instead of giving it back to the city, can't we utilize it in the district on things that we need? I'm just because the number that got thrown on was what seven hundred thousand dollars that we I don't know if that's correct, but whatever we get, couldn't we use utilize it to upgrade our schools or couldn't the board decide to take that? Let's say it's five hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year. Couldn't the board say, look, let's use that to update stuff? Or are we allowed to do that instead of giving it back? So, so in theory, yes. So you have to understand. Remember, the city improves your bottom line, and then you have all of these sub budgets in these different committees. Okay, so think about your household budget. It's a bottom line, right? You basically have bills and all these things, but there's one bank account you pay from. At any time, you can make a recommendation at the board level to move money, let's say, out of Mr. Toddy's facilities into instruction. Let's say instruction had needs, but that would be a board decision. I think the hard part with surplus at the end of the year is that that dollar that exists doesn't exist July 1. So at the end of the year when you want to do something big like uh, repoint a, a, ch a chimney at School Street or another brick building, you can't physically do it in the fiscal year that the money exists, so then the money goes away. So we keep an eye on the surplus because then you can make decisions on what needs might exist or pop up, but it's something that if it's a big project, it's hard to pull off at the end of the fiscal year. And can I respond? Yeah. I'm just saying, if we can move it around, I'd rather, if the city gave us that money, we spend every dime in the district somewhere. In, in, in last year, last year he, we had a list of, you know, high priority things that we tucked in at the end, and, you know, Again, going back to what could be, we need to close the books basically June 30th. It needs to be paid, bought and paid for by June 30th. So I don't necessarily disagree, but on the same note, you know, uh, it's that, you know, the, the public image, if you will, as well, as far as, well, they got it, so they're going to spend it anyway. I, uh, well, it, it, well, there is, but, but again, Within realistic time frames, so um, just you know, go ahead. If we can't allocate the money; it has to physically be spent by July first. Yes. We can't allocate. By June thirtieth. Well, yeah, you have to receive the product or the service by June thirtieth. So we can issue a contract, and the work not be completed. Correct. On that topic, though, that if if you knew that mm -hmm. Dave Toddy needed a plow truck and Granite Ford or Rochester Ford, whatever it's called now, has one on stock and we have the money, we could buy it before the end of the fiscal year. So that is a possibility. But, you have to but have it has to be need delivered need. by June 30th. <clears throat> All right. 
mean, it's it, it's very preliminary. We got we got a lot of work, a lot of work as a school board, to, you know, and uh, our hands are tied with a lot of the numbers. So, so with no further discussion, do you have any other? I do have one. Okay, other. go ahead. Um, just I'll share. Mr. Bellows at the last school board meeting asked about uh, the elementary music positions that are vacant and what we're doing. So I'd like to share that with the board. So we have three schools that are short for music uh, uh, elementary teacher. These schools include School Street, William Allen, and Chamberlain. And this is how the staff, mostly principals or assistant principals with pair support, are filling that. As you recall, we pay pairs additional money to cover for a teacher, so they get their hourly rate plus, plus money. Um, so at School Street, the pair support or principal work to fill a position through Christmas because they were preparing for the concert. But they have been very successful in, in getting a regular person to come in and substitute on the music day. Um, the person likes music and, and uh, likes to come in on that day. Uh, William Allen is actually kind of fortunate because their new elementary principal, or excuse me, elementary assistant principal, is a former music teacher. So she has been working at William Allen uh, and providing support to the folks covering that as well. And so Miss Dorsey is that music certified uh, teacher who's the assistant principal. And they're breaking it up with <clears throat> music curriculum, and then iReady and Amplify. So Amplify is our um, personalized learning suite uh, that goes along with CKLA, the reading program. And iReady is the new math program. So students get a little bit of three things during that period of time. And you'll see a similar model at Chamberlain. Uh, so they use, Mr. Goodwin has a district subscription called Quaver. Quaver is a, a music program that allows students to hear and, and see uh, real classical music, different, but then also allows them to put music together themselves in packages by editing and, and manipulating sounds uh, and notes. But then they also do use periods of, of the time or the period to do reading and math as well. Mr. Bellow, thank you for, for the update. And I know I think we're just trying to make the best of a a tough situation, um, so I'm not in a position to offer any solutions, but I think it is worth saying that, <clears throat> that half of the kids in the district right now are getting a music classes from certified music teachers, and the other half are online and taking, you know, again, we're doing the best that we can do, but it's absolutely inequitable. I know the kids at Chamberlain, I'm thinking about fourth graders right now that have waited three years to have chorus and haven't had a single chorus class yet this year. It's tough. It's a staffing issue. I know it's affecting everybody across the country, but um, we do have a, an equitable situation within our district right now when it comes to the music program. Mm -hmm. But thank you for following up. Does this constitute two full positions, or is this? Yes. <clears throat> Would these these would qualify as a where they call it a hardship position? Is that the hard to Fill positions. There's a term for it. Critical shortage. Oh, critical uh, shortage. Critical shortage. Um, I'm not sure if elementary is, uh, music is on critical shortage, but I think music teachers are few and far between, probably. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible to offer um, sort of a, additional bonus money to that to fill positions like this, or is that a violation of the contract? That would be a violation of the contract. But we are following the contract to pay pairs more when they're supporting that. The other thing Mr. Goodwin and I have talked about uh, <coughs> with that, uh, is that he, Mr. Goodwin has a very close connection to UNH, uh, and there's a few UNH students that will be graduating in May, and perhaps if we get these positions, like Ms. Abbiati's position posted, that we may be able to welcome someone in May to finish out the year, and then hopefully retain that person for the next year, so that uh, is a fingers crossed moment. Can I ask one follow-up? Could we look into getting... Um, more student or getting student teachers in the music program so then we can kind of funnel we, we try music to music or excuse me student teachers are in short demand as well so we are very lucky we currently have five uh student interns at you at um, Spalding high school unfortunately none of them are music teachers um but we're looking to continue that program through uh, unh next year and perhaps we get a music educator but can't guarantee it thank you mr downs just on um, going off of what Mr. Bellow said, it's, it's, I know it's, it's tough because just we don't have the teachers. It's just reading what they're 
they're doing it's it seems like they're for a music class that you're supposed to be socializing and get buried in, in, a, in a device and that's what's reading this is unfortunate I know our, our hands are tied and I'm sure some of these students may, might be their favorite um, special and they go in there and they're not saying it's a bad thing but they're, they're doing math instead of being able to go do music it's, um, which for a math teacher over there but it's just they, they're looking forward to that special so unfortunately they got the special and then they're buried in a device and it's just it's very unfortunate and upsetting so Kyle again I agree I, I, I totally agree so my question Kyle is do all the music teachers at the elementary work under the supervision or uh, guidance of Mr. Goodwin as far as well, he's the district department head right they so, report to their principal right well okay so and again is it is it fair and, and I'm just brainstorming out of the box thinking I don't know um, you know a, 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 a senior at Spalding that's enthusiastic about music or you know, student teach type or you know I don't think prime minister would take too kindly to that. I, 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 again, I'm just yeah. no nope. thinking it's outside. You know, idea, but just just trying to get trying to get something to the younger yeah. younger kids where where maybe. Uh, Karen, what does prime think about like parents? Because you can't. They're not a highly educated teacher. I love my parents. I think they're great, but I mean they're also not teachers. So how long can a para? even under the instruction of a music director, actually teach a class. That doesn't seem like that would be okay either. Uh, I can look into that. Um, again, I'm not quite sure. I, I think they're subbing, so it's they're, they're subbing. And again, sometimes what's happening is the music department is finding a way at some point to rotate folks so that they get some music education, but there's not enough of them to go around. So I can look into that. Yeah, I mean, even like long-term subs, like even if you're a sub, I didn't think you could sub for a class without being considered a long-term sub, and then I think you had to have teacher credentials too, so you if could look at that. There's something about that. Yeah. So just going back over and read, is there anything we can do so our students aren't buried in an advice during their, their special? Is there anything else? It's just... Especially it's music. I'm sure every music, every school has, for at that level, has all the tools they need for music. And it just bothers me that our, our kids are buried in a device for almost an hour. So is there something we can do to get them out of a computer, out of their Chromebooks, their iPads, play with the drums or the cymbals or something we need to have in the music class? I, every, every school has it. And it bothers me. They have math when they're in their school. Nothing against math, <laughs> but they do that stuff in their regular throughout their day. And then they go to their special and they're and they buried in their device. It just it, it bothers me. So I'm just curious if we can reach out to our principal and see if we can do something that's not in a device for these kids in special. Um, doesn't really answer your question per se. But are we able to like rotate the other elementary music teachers at the other schools that are getting it to these schools so that these kids will have some music for the last half of the year so it's more equitable through the entire school year? Obviously, anything is possible. Um, I think that you'd be hearing from other parents that are upset that their child is not getting music. So, you know, it's 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 unfortunate. We're making, like Mr. Bell said, we're making the best of a bad situation. <laughs> can look to see if there's additional modalities we can get in, um, but I think we could ask for volunteers for that, um, but I think it would probably upset the other side of the district as well. So to follow on, I mean, that's actually a good, I mean, you can't potentially do it this year because they have contracts, but I mean, that's something we should be looking at for next year, especially when we're looking at the budget is we have staff that go to different schools. If we know there's a music music shortage, I understand that some parents want kids to have music all the time, but some kids are not getting it at all. So having that teacher be assigned to multiple schools until we get somebody assigned, we'll get our I mean we'll get music 
even half the time, but we need to be equitable across the board. So if parents are mad that their kid may not get music, some kids are not getting it at all right now. So I think that's something that needs to be fixed for next year when we're talking about music, especially if there's a huge shortage, is how do we spread it out throughout every school? So you said you just wrote the note, can you just add the next person, I'll just yep. give us an update to what the principals came up with. Any other discussion? Oh, you good? Sorry, a different other. Yeah, go ahead. That's the next go. You're up. Okay. Um, so kind of on the topic of this, uh, with recruiting and retaining staff, is there a way that like the school board could send out a survey to the staff to see like what they need um, to help them be successful for the rest of the school year, or what they would like? Like, what would be helpful for them, like, to come back, just to kind of get a pulse on, like, specifically where the staff are, to try to help retain them so they don't leave, um, but to get an idea of how we can start targeting other uh, people to come work here. Like, is there anything we could do? In a situation like that, we would ask the district to pr bring forward a proposal on retention and have the HR professional bring forward things that are known in the industry that are ways that you can do employee engagement and such, but that would be led by the district, not necessarily, because our job is to supervise one individual, not the entire majority, but we can ask the superintendent okay. for ideas on something like that. As an example. Right. Again, just, to, just as a reminder that, you know, I've, I've got to even to it, but we have one employee, and, and I, I understand where you're going, and I don't disagree with it. Yeah. Um, you know, we manage him, and if, and if we direct the superintendent to, you know, get feedback from the, the, the teachers or whatnot, then, um, but, you know, again, just to reiterate, it's... And, and again, if I just may chime in, you can direct me to do a survey. I would ask you what you would want included in that survey, right? And then I would facilitate the survey, and then I would get it back to you. So, again, the board would make a motion. I would ask for your guidance on some of the things you want, and maybe I would add some suggestions. I would show it to you, and then we could send it, or I would send it to the staff, right? But it would be a directive from you to me because, you know, again, if you like surveys, which I think you do, right, you can have a survey. I'll make a motion for the survey. I'll second so, Ms. McGowan, if you want to draft some things and run them by me, and I can yeah. improve some stuff and add things. We've got a motion and seconded to direct the superintendent to survey the needs, survey the needs of current employees. Retention needs. Retention needs of, retention right? needs of, of current employees. And you're talking <laughs> teachers, paras, food, custodial, yep. the whole district? Yeah. Released to the whole district? Okay, and you're going to work with him as far as getting <coughs> the motion and second and any further discussion? Mr. Bullier, for those questions would present to the whole committee next month. Yeah. I don't necessarily disagree with, with the, the motive and, and whatnot, but serving 800 people in the district is quite a bit. I, I think I would support classroom teachers and maybe paras um, and maybe support personnel, but um, when you start serving 800, <laughs> it's about 800 733. 733 people, it's, it's kind of daunting. Uh, and then you get to collate that information and into a presentable data set. Yeah. So you, you do want the higher number of people though, to have a like validity within your data set. If you don't have enough responses, then the validity is really low. So realistically, you're probably not even gonna have half the people respond to it. Um, but you do the more responses you can get, the higher the validity of the data set is. 
Mrs. Stokes? I just, I just wanted to agree with that. I mean, we had something that went out last time for a survey, and I think they said there was 25. So 25% 25 of 800 would be 200 responses, which would be great if we got more. But, I mean, I agree. How do you... I think teachers and parents are important, but I also think all the other staff is. So when we're talking about retention, I think it's worth it if you're going to do a survey to go out and do the data. Because the last survey, or when a union does a survey and then we always question, you know, how do the other people not get involved? I think doing a survey, I'd rather have too much information than not enough. So I would say if you're going to do the survey, I would say we should do it with everybody included. Mr. Cusmano. I would agree, too, because the odds of us even getting 50% will be very slim, but we're going to need as much data as I think. And, out of, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but out of that 100 positions that we have open, they're not all staff and teachers. I'm not sorry, staff. They're all not teachers in Paris. It's food service. It's special education. It's occupational therapy. It might be grounds people. We need everybody's input because we can't right now, 100 positions open, we need to keep whoever we have. We need to find out what their problems are and what we can do to address them, especially before we present a budget, if we're going to be over budget, to the city. And again, just to just to re, we, we, we have human resources, with, right, and, and part of their job is to hear some of that stuff as well, and the re recruiting and retention falls into human resources, so... Any further discussion, Mr. Downs? So for this, do we want like a timeline? Like, what's a good timeline for you to get this out, give them time to do it? Two months? But I think Mr. Bullard was saying that Mr. Gowan and I draft something, we present it here at the next personnel committee next month, and then you'd have it, what's that, March? You'd have it, you'd close it. For two weeks, three weeks, you could, I don't know how long you want to leave it open, but you could have it by the end of that month. All right. My only concern with sending that survey, one survey out to all people included, is I feel that it should be more targeted because what teachers and parents may need in a classroom is going to be very different than what support staff or grounds crew may need. So it's going to be very hard to gauge that input coming back on a survey when you're trying to figure out what the teachers and staff need versus what administrators may need versus grounds crew or something. Yeah, so there's a really cool thing that you can do, I'm assuming you use Google surveys, um, you can select like pick your job title and then it can take you to specific questions based on your job title. Um, so that would be able to target the specific questions for those jobs. Well, the only thing I want to just mention is we're over the tax cap now. Um, and we're trying to watch costs. So though we want retention, staff are going to say, well, if I have X, Y, Z, there's a budgetary timeline impact that we also have a responsibility to the taxpayers to make sure, and to the district, to make sure we have all the needs for continuing our services as they are now. So just, I know new board members, we're, we're eager to get solutions and help, but we can't always throw, or not throw, that's the wrong word, but put money everywhere. We only have so much that we can spend. Ms. Herring? I just worry about survey fatigue. We have focus groups coming up. We have a district-wide survey that's out there right now with the superintendent search. So that's just the, the participation level. I worry about that. Karen? Um, not everybody that has retention needs is monetary. So, I mean, getting that survey and just finding out what they, you know, it could just mean they need a extra prep one time a month. You know what I mean? Like, I know it comes with a monetary value, but I'm just saying, like, just because you're asking them what they need for retainment doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily be a monetary value either. We may be surprised at what we get. It's Kuzmano. Uh, she got it. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, 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 I get it. And, and, you know, we'll hear the needs. They also have to understand on the other end that not all the needs can be met due to financial restrictions and things like that. So just because it's, you know, it's a wish list, if you will, <laughs> kind of presented that way. Um, you know, again, we're 1.1, almost 1.2 million over or whatever. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. So, so there's a motion on the floor. Thank you. 
There's been motion and seconding. Any further discussion? I think we pretty well beat it to death. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Matt, for that. Any, any other others? Oh, gee, yeah, you need to, yeah, Steve is like, you blocking you, so it's not that I'm ignoring you. Just along those lines, this might be more personal for me, but in an effort to get up to speed with the data that we've already collected and to understand um, what's going on with our staff, the struggles that they have. Are, uh, are there any other surveys that have been conducted fairly recently that we can have access to the results? I'm thinking, or like even like the NELMS assessment, things of that nature that we can look at or I can have access to, we can have access to, to just get an understanding of what's going on in the schools with our staffs, personnel. We have, we have now we'll be in the school year with instruction. So, uh, Mr. Gilpatrick presented to you all at the instruction committee um, at the beginning of the school year and did it at the, at the end of last year and then again earlier. Um, I can ask for an update on where that is, so thank you. Any others? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So Perfect. moved. So moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned.